because the whole project of honoring the trees, there's been very little, I don't know about you, but having worked closely with this issue over the years, I'm frustrated by the media coverage that sort of focuses on, well, how did Neil Young get there? What did he do? He doesn't have, like, did he drive? Like, oh, okay, so he has a car that he converted so it doesn't use, well, who built the car? Uh, Neil Young must use fossil fuels somewhere. So, I mean, the level of discourse focusing on Neil Young as a Canadian celebrity and what right does he have to talk about treaty rights? Well, how many people would have ever heard the Athabasca Chippewa First Nation talk about the treaty rights if Neil Young hadn't been picking up the cause and talking about the need to raise funds for what will be a very costly court battle to protect the treaties? And again, as you heard in the video of uh, the community there, the chief and council aren't saying they're trying to shut down the oil sets. They're just trying to make sure there's enough there for them to survive and honor the treaties. So that's one little window into the larger thing I wanted to talk about tonight, which is energy policy in Canada. And are we capable of thinking like a country? I say this because the case against the oil sands uh, on the economics has never been made. The case for the oil sands on its economics has never been made. They don't have to make it because they assume they Stephen Harper and crew, assume that if they say often enough, it's good for the economy, it's good for Canada's national interest, or as Leona Huka just said, surely these adverse environmental impacts that cannot be mitigated, and sure, we're not supposed to approve a project when we find that as fact, and sure, there's going to be adverse impacts on the treaty rights of First Nations peoples, and we are required by the Supreme Court of Canada to protect treaty rights which are constitutionally enshrined.